Sven Panke doesn't want to build houses. He hopes to use genes to create built-to-order cells with completely new properties. It's like playing with blocks, only far more complex. We don't know all the interactions that might interfere. In reality, the picture is far more complicated than what I've depicted here. This is what we understand and actually observe. But everything around it, everything we don't understand, I've left out. This interdisciplinary new field of research is called synthetic biology. Some researchers envision cells that are programmed to perform specific tasks, such as excreting building materials. Others want to genetically engineer plants, for example, to make them hardy enough to survive on Mars. Yet others want to modify the digestion in cattle, so they no longer produce the greenhouse gas methane. Those are just a few possible applications for this pioneering technology. The idea is that if we can actually program complex functions, then we can start to tackle some of the basic elements of what constitutes a living cell. And hopefully we can advance it all to the point where it becomes as easy to program cells as it is to build a computer. In Panka's lab in Basel, they've already made a bacterial cell that can be remote controlled. It moves in response to light. The characteristic has been built into a strain that doesn't have it in nature. So how does it work? All you need to do is move the joystick firmly. A group of Panka's students developed the modified bacterium and presented it at an international competition for young researchers in 2010. There were a lot of frustrating moments, especially during the experiments. But in the end it worked out, and that made me very happy for them. The prize was this trophy that we were awarded at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And we were very pleased to get it. The biotechnologists obtained their promising results quickly, because they could design DNA sequences on a computer and then order them from a company that custom makes them. At this biotech firm in Regensburg, fully automated robots synthesize the desired gene sequences. Panka is just one of the company's many customers. They include pharmaceutical and chemical companies, hoping to use artificial cells to replace petroleum and natural gas. Every month, more than 1,000 new genes are put together here. Interest in synthetic biology is growing worldwide. It gives researchers an opportunity to take what nature has to offer and engineer it to produce something new. All with the help of a little artificial genetic material delivered by mail. British architect Rachel Armstrong hopes, for example, that cells like those produced by Sven Panke can prevent Venice from sinking into the sea. The houses in the city built on a lagoon rest on wooden pilings, and at the surface of the water, they're rotting. Synthetic cells could prevent further deterioration by producing coatings of limestone from atmospheric CO2. They could also be used to make synthetic reefs, to keep floodwaters at bay, or even to create new buildings. We need an artificial solution rather than a natural solution because we're in control of this time scale, we're in control of the materials, and we can engineer the outcome. Panka can't create such cells yet. Cell biology is incredibly complex. But as a genetic engineer, he looks for simple mechanisms that work the way he wants them to. When he programs a cell, he wants it to function reliably. We would be very happy if the biological components that we use or design worked as regularly and reliably as the elements of the Tangeli fountain here. That would be wonderful.
The field is still in its infancy, and specifically tailored plants, animals or houses made from designed cells are still a distant dream. But the debate about what is possible and what is ethically acceptable is already underway. And one thing is clear, synthetic biology has enormous potential.